This is Richard Wolf from Democracy at Work with another Wolf response. My first level of response is to disasters with a sense of sorrow, empathy, and really bubbling anger below those. I'm talking about disasters in Pakistan, in Jackson, Mississippi, in Flint, Michigan, and yes, in the Ukraine in a way also. What links all of these together are the following. Water, safe water to drink, is a fundamental necessity of life for human beings and for many, many other species as well. Therefore, one of the first obligations of any government, of any entity in charge of providing safe drinking water is to make sure that there's not only a plan A about how to do that, but a plan B and a plan C so that water safe to drink is available to sustain human life, to avoid all manner of diseases and sufferings that we can and should never face again. Having said that, here's the first linkage. Pakistan has been suffering flooding and monsoon rains and a whole lot of other things. It has been doing that for centuries. But what is distinctive about the modern era is the devastation we could have avoided that we didn't as a people, as the population of a planet, as decent human beings. In Pakistan, it's well known that if you have a house made out of brick, you do better in rain and flooding than if you have a house made of packed earth. This is not rocket science. That thousands of people have been dying in recent weeks in Pakistan. That tens of thousands have been displaced, have lost their homes, have seen their fields uh, useless because the crops are killed by flooded, dangerously troubled water. Now next, Jackson, Mississippi. We're getting closer, aren't we? In Jackson, Mississippi, for over a month now, according to press reports, the water has been unfit, unsafe to drink for the people of Jackson, Mississippi. And to remind anyone whose geography is rusty, that's the capital of the state of Mississippi. Then when extra flooding happened, thanks to global warming, for which Mississippi wasn't ready, Jackson wasn't ready, the United States wasn't ready, we are seeing absence of safe water, a catastrophe for Jackson, Mississippi, and the people who live there, who have been boiling water for the last month, and now can't even get that on some occasions, need to have bottled water brought in, and that was late in the day. Later than all of these events, President Biden said something. Took him a while, he was busy. And there we get to Ukraine. Why is Ukraine relevant? They were worried ever since the war with Russia began about the potential problem they would be having, maybe, in providing safe drinking water. The United States, in anticipation of what might happen, has provided tens of millions of dollars specifically for safe water drinking in Ukraine and sent the money over there to the politicians who will or will not use it for what it was supposed to go for, if they need it. I'm not going to comment on the different ways this government of the United States deals with human suffering in Pakistan, 
with human suffering in Jackson, Mississippi, and with the potential for human suffering in Ukraine around the issue of water. That's obvious what's going on there. It is the politicization of the provision of life-sustaining water. But I want you all, please, to notice with me that the extremity of the flooding, the extremity of all the climate change effects, whether it be fire or drought or whatever it is, have been talked about for decades. The planning in the event that they might happen, the kind of planning going into the money to Ukraine, didn't happen for Jackson, just like it didn't happen for Flint, Michigan, with its crisis in drinkable, safe water. When we look at Jackson, Mississippi, we're looking at one of the poorest places in the United States. When we look at Pakistan, we're looking at one of the poorest countries on this planet. They made minuscule contributions to the environmental catastrophe we are living through, but they do the maximum in suffering. And that's the way capitalism has always worked. Putting the burden on those least capable to handle it. Pushing the burden off of those most able to handle it. Just like the inflation is worse for the poorer you are than it is for the rich. Or rising interest rates. Or any of the other policies our government chooses to use in the service of corporations and the rich. We are watching spectacles of suffering that are dangerous, perfectly avoidable, if the commitment is made not to allow the rules of capitalism, serving the rich and the corporations first and everybody else with whatever is left over. Those rules have to be challenged and suspended. If we are going to do better in the face of these disasters, then these disasters now facing us are putting us through. If discussions like these strike you as they do us, necessary things to intervene with in the national discussion about what matters to our own future and that of the world we live in, then please partner with us. Share this video. Friends, co-workers, relatives, extend the reach of this kind of intervention to change the conversations in our society about the problems that literally plague us. And of course, if you can help us defray the costs of producing and distributing these videos, that will be an enormous help as well. Thank you.